What's up guys? Thanks again for coming back to see another video. I have some good news for you, but I have some amazing news for me. Remember last week we were talking about all the things, we were struggling to pay for this, struggling to pay for that. My eyebrow here was growing onto my beard. All the worries are gone. I logged on the next day, I played a Sunday session. It's a high rollers tournament, all on stars and on party on Sundays. Amazing tournaments. And I did okay. I did quite well. I did enough that on next video, this is going to be trimmed down a little bit. I'm going to have something with my microphone holding it up just like Joe Rogan. Oh, what, what, what's this? I'm not, not sure about that. Not sure. Okay, editor, maybe, maybe we cut, maybe we, I, I don't, whatever. We'll leave that one in for now. But I've made a montage of my biggest run on Sunday. I had four to five hours of footage, which will be in my main course. But I've kind of put all the biggest highlights of the final table of the biggest tournament where I had the best success all into one 30 minute clip where you guys can watch it and hopefully you enjoy it. I've literally said everything which I believe of strategy. I haven't held anything back. This is exactly how I think of poker and the highest level that I know. So I hope you like it. Please let me know in the comments if you do like it. I've been enjoying interacting with you guys there. It's kind of a weird thing to say, like, oh, I've been enjoying interacting with my fans in the comment section. But it's actually genuinely true. Like, when you guys comment, it comes up on my phone. I'm sure most guys have it turned off, but I'm, I'm replying quickly and I'm enjoying having some banter with some of you guys in there. Some of you guys give me some stick, but it's all right. I, I can handle that. Don't worry. That's what you want to give me. I'll take it. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you guys after the video. How's it going guys? Pads here and it's going to be a live session. I finally got down to my last six tables. I've stopped registering so I allow myself to have the stream on. I have a table behind the webcam so I will pull that in. That's a, it's a tournament party just uh, kind of mid stages. We have the Irish Masters main event which is 1k. We have the 1000 Sunday warm up on stars, which is quite a big one. Uh, first place 20k and we're one out of 12. So this will take most of our focus. Lena all in here with a set against straight draw. One final table now, this is pretty interesting. We have GF Gandra on our left, which is not great because he's obviously on the aggressive side. We have Akari on our left, Lena on our left, Via here. We have Twist, who I'm not too sure of. Uh, Steve O'Dwyer, Arpilon, and Papan, who is the chip leader. Uh, Ace 10 off, blind versus blind, I think I can have some raises here. Uh, he's not going to isolate me very wide when he has a stack size which is more concerned about um, keeping his stack rather than increasing his stack. So um, like he's more in, he's more incentivized about stack preservation rather than accumulation. So I'm not going to get the EV of Ace 10 of him isolate me with say 10 deuce off. So I'd rather raise myself and you know get called by 10 7 off 10 8 off all these kind of hands pocket queens here i'm similar as before i feel like there's no real need to reshove here if i have a hand like ace 10 i would want to call and then fold to jeff gan just shove um he's never going to fold ace queen or ace king or anything like that anyway so i'd rather just call here and i'm going to call the top of my range as well i feel like i can bet the ace i start putting pressure on the pocket pairs he's most likely checked his range on the flop um it's a good result for uh, King 5 off here. Like, it's not thrilling, but we're so deep that I don't really need to be too concerned about ICM. If I have, say, 30 big blinds, I can start worrying because he's going to start blasting, but he's not going to put 90 big blinds in against me, right? So I have an easy call here, I think. I'm going to play very passive as the out of position here, I think, as well. Queen 10 tank calls, which is fine. Like, we're not trying to make, we're not trying to make Queen 10 full. He checks the turn, the flop, sorry, and I think if I check the turn, he's going to be quite aggressive against uh, double check. So his delay C bet here will be quite aggressive. He's going to bet, say, an 8. He's going to bet ace 5, maybe, just for some protection. Um, I feel like some check raise here with my hand is pretty sexy. He's going to think I'm maybe full of shit. He's not going to fold an 8. He's not going to fold queens, jacks, 10s. I fold out some hands like ace high if he ever has this from improving the river this guy leads and there's a bounty so i'm definitely not folding with two other cards so i'm gonna go for the raise here with the king five and i'm gonna play a river i'm like we're not gonna play a big pot we're not gonna play a big pot but then it looks like we may play a big pot uh, i will block the river as out of position if i was in position i would check back and just take my equity but it's out of position i believe i can put a bet in and i think around about 40 percent looks okay shouldn't have too many raises against me here. I think 9-10 will always bet the flop. I think pocket twos 
uh, you could have. You may not even raise that. I have pocket eights, pocket sevens, nine, ten, five, four. And yeah, I'm, I'm happy. I feel like I got a really nice turn check raise in there where it would be more common to just bet ourselves. But I feel like going for the delay check raise is pretty a pretty nice play. And queens we will induce against uh, Tim McComb, Steve O'Dwyer, and blind versus blind, I'll go for a raise strategy again for the larger size. And again, he's just not going to isolate like 10-9 suited like he would do normally, so or like at least aggressively normally. So I want to raise myself and make sure that we get lots of value in. I'll have a polarized range raise in here. Hands like maybe, you know, king two off or so, just whatever I choose to be on the polar side. So because of that, I feel like... Uh, because of that, I feel like we want to use a bigger size. I don't want to give him a good price uh, when I'm out of position. On the plop, going for one third seems to make some sense. Put lots of hands into a situation which may call in chippy V, but we'll have to fold with some ICM considerations. Like, let's say he has a hand like King 9. He will always call with ICM, but it starts making those hands a little bit indifferent or a little bit some pressure on them. Um, I will ISO and, of course, call it jam. He will limp shove. I mean, he, he, he should open shove himself with a lot of, the, of ASX. He will also have some limp shoves. There's a lot of EV and limp and then shoving over a raise. Because if he thinks I'm going to raise like 5-2 up, then it's better for him to limp shove A6, let's say. He has Ace-10, so we're, we're living live so far. Good results. Good results. Take out a really good player. And carry on chipping up. Ace-4 off here. I'm kind of intrigued if I want to have some shoves. Playing against 30 and 15, um, I feel like my, probably not. I feel like if it was 25 and 15, we would have some shoves because we're against 10, 10, and 15. A good flop for me, he should reshove a lot of ace uh, If the board was ace, queen, seven, I would have some big betting because I can make seven X indifferent. When it's a free, I think we don't want to have big bets because he doesn't have as much like seven free or king free, whereas I think he always defends king seven. So on those ace queen sevens i can make seven x indifferent but i don't need to make three x indifferent here because he won't defend that much three x oh i hope that makes sense i hope i'm correct but that's how i that's how i approach the spot at least throw our way to belt yeah you can see see these big guns i'm sure i'm sure that they're petrified of this big weight coming their way um but no maybe 2022 we have a a pads on roys or something to make them scared at wsop Oh, baby cakes. Two free off. Uh, we could have like a 5x raise size and be extremely polar. Um, but I feel like we just don't really need to. One thing why I think it's good is because we're going to be on his, we're going to have position on him for the whole tournament. And we're going to get in spots where we want to get paid. So I think starting off versus his first limp showing huge aggression. Even if I show the hand down, I think it's okay. It's going to give me some decent future EV. Because he's more likely to if he has a bluff catcher on the river, rather than say, okay, I'll wait for a better spot. Okay, it's pads. He's 5x ISO and we're free to off. It's going to kind of be in his mind. So even though I typically wouldn't do this, you know, we get tangled, quite a nice thing. In the future, also, next time it's blind versus blind, he may just open fold a hand like 6 5 off suit. He's like, pads is just ice on me every time. So I feel like it's good to just take a spot which is like quite bad, if that makes sense, just to kind of get that aggressive image. Ace Jack suited, we're going to go for the shove. Make Jirok Ganja fold some hands, which may shove when I call, but doesn't matter too much. My hand, I'm pretty happy with the strength of it. He's tanking. Well, he can have Ace Queen off, but yeah. Good flop. Bad turn. Great river card. So smooth sailing. Smooth, smooth sailing, which is always good to see. It doesn't matter. 6-2 up, I'm going to raise any two here. Uh, I think Akari will hopefully be watching, like, uh, one of his esports teams play, like, killing dragons or something. So hopefully he has loads of dragons flying around the screen, and he's going to under-defend the big blind here. But he calls, so we take that back. Um, and we'll start with bet. We can make a hand, like, king 8, king 9 of um, hearts fall. Hands like that, and we just get a plus EV bet. 6-7 suited. I think some shoves here would be okay. They all have to call off so tight. Giraffe is just a little bit too wide, I think. He just has a little bit too many chips. If he had like 25, I would go for a shove and take my equity. But I feel like 30, it's just a little bit too much. And 
the strategy of just RFI is just going to be making enough money without me having to overcomplicate that too much. If Papan opens here, I will fold. But if he folds, I'm definitely gonna shove. I make Queen Jack and Queen fold. I make some Asex fold. I make some pocket pairs fold. So my hand is really good. Uh it's it's a really good hand to shove, I think. And if I'm up against this, it's okay. If Lena doubles, it's not the end of the world. Uh, it actually, I'm going to get profitable spots to keep shoving or raising first. This is not going to be one of them because the big plan is going to be incentivized to gamble quite wide because of future game. But I'm not too concerned about losing and Lena's a really good guy. So big up Lena. He's probably not watching. <laughs> probably not here to learn from me. Uh, but if you are here, send me a message. Have a chat. Be nice to have some some things which we normally do it every few months. Let's do it next week. Uh, here we have some fun things we do off the table. Ace 10 off and King 10 off. And it looks like we're going to get a ladder. Which is good news. It's always good news to get a ladder. We need off here. Giraffe should be really tight. I feel like I have just such a little ICM on me that it's good for me to be uh, somewhat sticky. Like I'm not going to defend, say, Queen 6 off like I would do in, in Chippy V. But I think, you know, Fold in a few pips. I mean, this flop check back is extremely bizarre because I won't defend any offsuit deuce apart from ace deuce. So I don't have enough trips in my range to start manipulating the check raise range. So I believe that he should play a pure min bet on this board. When he min bets on the flop, he forces all my offsuit hands to just fold like queen eight off, you know, seven eight offsuit, etc. So his most efficient strategy on 10 deuce deuce, I believed, was to go for the min bet, but he checks, which is. Kind of peculiar to me, kind of suspicious. Maybe it's like extremely value heavy. Um, in these kind of spots, you're, you're almost tempted to just pull down twice because you're so curious. Um, but yeah, I'm obviously just going to fold. But I, I'm not I'm not sure what he's checking back on the flop. Maybe I just, maybe I don't understand the spot well enough or maybe there's something going on there. Um, but yeah. I think I'll get reshoved on by pocket pairs from all three. Deuces plus. So we can get some really good situations here. They're also going to shove Asex on me quite aggressively. May even get some free bet folds from Giraffe here. Uh, I should even have some four bet non all in against free bet non all in because he's going to be so polarized. On the flop here against Lena, I want to incentivize check raise. So I want King of Hearts seven to check raise me, etc. So I think small size works out pretty well here. And yeah, we'll do that. I also don't want to use too big of a size where a lot of his range is just natural check shove. So like seven eights, the double gutter, uh, flush draws are are just gonna shove when I bet. So because of that, I feel like it's quite crucial for me to not have a big size on this board because I have so much trash that I just this is more an efficient size. I can make king eight offsuit, king nine offsuit, ace five offsuit, etc. Fold. He raises me, and I definitely want to keep in king of hearts x and queen of hearts x. So I'm definitely just gonna go for a call. I'm gonna stack a ten regardless. So. Obviously, it's a really bad turn card. It's a really, really bad turn card. Could also have aces. He bets the turn, and I feel like he's going to give up the river quite a lot. So I feel like on the river, if he has hearts or clubs, he's just going to give up. So I feel like he is going to bet them on the turn like this, though. So I feel like he just gets to check fold the river when he misses. So I'd rather charge his equity, pot's big enough, and just shove now. And if he has, like, ace-x flush draw, like a combo draw, he may just feel compelled to call off as a short stack. So... I'm going to shove. I'm going to run into a 10, obviously, sometimes, but that's fine. Yeah. It's okay. I like my play. I think slow playing the flop definitely is the best play. Like, I'm just going to stack a 10 always. I want to keep in the bluffs, so... Yeah. I think his check raise on the flop is pretty good. I'm going to have, like, 10-9, 10-8, 10-7, flush draws, ace-king, so many hands which will continue, so... Uh, yeah, it's Take a little good look at water before I open the 7-6 on the button into the richest Brazilian in poker. I'm just joking. I don't know anyone's financial status. Don't don't get aggro on me. Don't send me letters from your lawyer. King 10 off here, I feel, is good enough to cold call. Small blend. I don't want to have too many calls here, but I feel like this one is good enough to do. King 10 with a uh, backdoor flush draw and a gutter. We're obviously not folding. Um, we'll check, check. I will probably go for a bet on the river. I was, yeah, I, I am, I have, I am very, very far down, and I have a lot of value bets, so I am going to go for a bet. 
going to bet a size in which we'll put him in him as a short stack. So that's going to be 17 big blinds. I believe that's a good way to put pressure on him from a range point of view, not just with value, not just with bluffs. I think that should be a kind of good size. And 17 makes him go as a short stack, which he really doesn't want to do. Um, so yeah, I like this as a size. It puts pressure on even hands like, you know, ace four suited, ace eight, ace seven. Um, yeah, I think that size is good. And it's a size when you're the chip leader and you can kind of pick your size. I feel like that size is very efficient because it makes his range have to fold more than it would do relatively to Chippy V from every. Like if I go, if he can call and uh, still be second last in chips, that's more, that's better for him than if he calls and is in last in chips, if that makes sense. So choosing a size in which is going to put him five out of five is quite an efficient way to choose my bull up size. And as long as it doesn't become ridiculous, like betting 4x pot just because he's one big blind as a short stack. When it's quite similar to pot size, I think that's how we should choose us choose our size. And if if he if he is very polar, he has like ace five op, king five op, and then he has aces and kings. Against aces and kings, if I hit a set, I double up very frequently. Against ace five, etc., I'm gonna he's gonna bet small on the flop. I'm gonna call, then we're gonna check down sometimes. There's just lots of good stuff which can happen. And you know, maybe this is not too professional, but I'm gonna sweat it out like you, with you guys. So let's have a look. The first card is a king. It's, it's not good. First card is a king. Second card is a 10. That's really not good. The third card, spade is good for me, I think, right? Five, okay. I'll call, a, wow, it's a big old bet. Jesus. Uh, I will fold this is bet. I'll fold this is bet. Uh, but yeah, we had a sweat. And decent flop, could have some leads. He won't open offsuit cards like 8, 7 off. 6-5 off, etc. So I think leading could be a play here. I'm gonna have 7-9 off, 7-4 off, 8-5 off, 8-6 off. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go for a lead. I believe that he's gonna check this flop a lot with ace king, ace queen, ace jack. So he's gonna call up those hands. I'd rather put a bet in myself rather than going for a uh check raise because he's just not going to go to the bet node as aggressively as he would do in JPV. Turn, I believe I'm now wanting to go quite polar. I'm not going to bet again, probably with like 10 8 or ace 8 or king 8. Um, so I'm going to go for a large size. I have a lot of hands which will be bluffing, like a 7, a 9, clubs. Uh, 8 5 obviously just loves. Wow, he shoves. Not slow rolling here, but what does he have? Oh, I guess I have to call. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. I mean, you know, lots of th lots of things could happen uh, by checking the flop, check raise. We're probably going to get it in, but he's also if I check raise the flop and we get it in, like he's not going to be in good shape. Like if I check raise flop, get in, I'm going to have seven nine always, seven four always, six five eight six sixes fives eights. I wouldn't show eights pre flop, so I feel like my hand fold this one. I feel like my hand actually really loves betting the flop and being able to dictate the turn size and because there's ways where he could potentially get away probably not with this exact hand on this exact spot but there's ways where he could potentially get away somehow but by leaving the flop myself uh when he has ace king ace queen ace jack like let's say the turn was an ace and uh, i've managed to get a bet in on the flop and then be able to overbet the turn and he then shoves or whatever if i check the flop he's very likely going to check two then when the ace comes on the turn, I have to check probably on the ace. Then he bets, then he raises, and it's really dicey. But by leading the flop when it's so advantageous for us, I feel like it gives us a lot of EV in that spot. I think it's quite crucial for our, our strategy too. So uh, yeah, I'm lucky to, to Nicholas, obviously. Fantastic play. He has jacks on fucking 8-5-6 flush draw against me. Like You just can't get away from that hand. So yeah, very unfortunate for Nicholas. He saw like a safe turn card. And yeah, sorry, sorry, bro. And uh, big love to you always. Um, I think I can start overbetting and making a hand like queen seven already think about folding. I think it's a board where I do ex especially well. I have jacks, tens, queens, and ace, king. And I feel like a hand like even jack eight is really not living life. So I feel like a large bet here makes some sense. If he has like a weak flush draw, you'll have to fold. I have to, he has to fold queen five. Like in chippy V, he won't fold top pairs and like pair plus potentially gutters and stuff like that. But in this kind of situation, I feel like I can get him to fold those hands and B 
being the big stack, I want to leverage my nut advantage at any point to use big sizes where he can't necessarily afford to put in big sizes. I'm going to isolate here for a large size. This jacket suited. And on the flop, we're going to go for a bet. I'm intrigued between half pot and third pot. It'd be nice to fold out jack 10 offsuit and queen jack offsuit to clean my outs a little bit. So I'm going to go for a slightly larger bet. The turn, we really don't want to get check raised. So let's have a look what will happen here. We bet six. Will he shove? If he check raises, I don't mind too much. I have a double gutter flush draw. I just don't want to get shoved on here. But again, if I can make him fold king queen and ace three and ace two and stuff like that, that's going to be quite good for me. So I am going to bet again. He can fold a four. He can fold a five. I just really don't want to get shoved on. It's not going to happen very often, but I just really don't want to get shoved on. So I'm going to go for a bet where... King four will fold, king five will fold. I don't need to bomb it. I don't need to blast it because I'm not trying to make good hands fold. I'm trying to make uh, like the weak parts of his range indifferent or just fold. So like the king queens, the ace twos, the king five suited, etc. King six suited, blind versus blind, I have an easy shove. Uh, I can't think of ever wanting to do anything else but shove here. Jeff three bets normally, which is really kind of weird. Oh, wow. Uh, Akari shoves. This is fucked up. So Giraffe is priced in and call Akari. Akari shouldn't just snap shove nines. Like nines is a consideration for him. He should definitely consider with nines. I have time bank, so I can take my time. Tens is a strong hand here. My image is extremely wide. Giraffe is going to go after me, but not too wide. Lots of Giraffe's aggression is going to come from Ace-X hands, like ace-9 off, ace-8 off, stuff like that. But a lot of his aggression is just going to be shoves, like queen-10 suited and stuff, queen-jack suited. So I believe his range should be quite strong. So Ikari can't just commit with, like, pocket sevens with no fold equity. So Ikari should be very strong, at least two overcards or, like, a higher pocket pair. So I'm going to fold my 10s. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Whew. Jeez. Jeez, jeez, jeez. Good fold, I guess. Cooler, right? Tens, queens, kings, like back to back to back. Just like just like for Kari there, I really feel like he should take some more time when he shoves preflop. Like, because he shoves so quickly, I believe he just doesn't have like eights and nines in his range. You say, oh yeah, this guy's committed to call me off. I'm going to shove the nuts. Rather than, oh, this ICM, like how much does that guy have? How much does that guy have? It's good to be consistent with your timings, I, I think. Um, you know, everyone play how you want to play. I'm just, just saying what, what I think. Check. Jack of hearts makes it attractive to bet. Um, but I'm going to go for a check. He's very ace high heavy, I guess. I block jacks and queens, which is really good for me to bet. When I have, when I have, he's most likely check, check, bluff catch is pocket queens and pocket jacks. So blocking both of them feels like it's just probably mandatory and unblocking ace high. So I'm going to go for the large size and which is good. Get a fold. There's some optional graphics. Uh, that's that, that's too, too much for me. So I'm going to check this one back. Get to call the turn. Two overs and the nut gutter. I definitely get to call the turn here. For sure. And we're going to sweat it out together like last time from left to right. First of all, we're going to go for his own bet. See what he does. If he goes all in, we can then sweat it. If not, we may shove any rear anyway. He is sweating. What is he going to do? He's taking his time, so it might be an interesting river card. If he goes all in, I'll have to like look kind of quickly just in case I'm slow rolling him that like small percentage of the time. Can't wait too low, too strong. The pots at uh, four on the river. No spade in my hand. I guess I have to turn this one into a bluff. I have a lot of 7x that I just wouldn't want to bet full flop with. So I'm going to go for a bet. Straight. So we'll go in, I guess. 17, 34, 54. 34, 44. He would be close to chip leader, but I think this puts the most pressure on his hands. He's going to have a straight himself, though, sometimes. It's a tough spot for 
It's a tough spot for what river size I want to use myself. I think this one is quite... I think Chauvin just does... When he has so much straights, he can play like this. I don't think Chauvin is, is good. I think this size works really well against, like, one pair of hands or slightly better hands, like King-10 or King-Jack. They just bet the turn or, like, Ace-3 or whatever. Just, just decided to bet. Maybe a rivet four, something like this. I don't need to shove against the four. I think like pop pot makes sense. I don't want to raise this. He should have a polarized range here. There's no reason for me to raise fold or raise call this hand. So I'm going to check it back. Flop the nuts. If he checks, it's bizarre because he should probably have most. He should probably range better, I guess. But then again, he's going to shove most ASEX. I'm going to check ASEX back. I actually have the most ASEX here out of any of us, I think. And I have all the flushes as well. So it doesn't make any sense to range, but actually. Um, I'm going to check back the flop. I'm going to check back the flop. I'm going to have lots of check folds. Uh, I'm going to, you know, play quite checky here as well. Um, I may get like two two bets out of him with like no equity hand, like nine, ten offsuit or something. Um, the turn here, I'm going to bet small enough that he'll check raise for value with like somewhat thinly. River, I'm going to bet myself. He shouldn't have. He can have some Queen Jack. I block the King, which is like kind of weird in terms of pairs. Like if I had like Queen Nine of Hearts, or like let's say like Nine Seven of Hearts, whatever reason, I'm probably more inclined to go really big. Uh, I'm going to make it look like a desperation bet here. So I'm going to let the time bank go down to like five seconds and look like I'm rushing into a bet and going for a big size because last time I did the same thing. And yeah, I'm betting pretty polar here. And yeah, get the quick call. So that's good. This makes it a little bit more dicey. I'm going to min free bet. Uh, I think this is also quite efficient. I can have some folds like this potentially. All right, do well against that. Well, that's a bad flop. It's a good turn. Not a bad... It's weird when you have bad feelings, isn't it? Sometimes you need to just keep the morale high. He's opening off 13 big blinds here. I'm just going to shove my ace jack. Obviously, when I get called, I'm not in good shape, but my hand just is good enough to do to do this with. I will call this shove. We'll take a shove. Eight, queen, fives. Okay, we'll flip against fives. Oh, this guy's decent at this. Uh, raise rather than shove with queen ten, I think. Oh, shove could be an option. I think shove is a decent option, actually. Both guys have to call tight. I'm going to check this king ten. Oh, we don't want to get called. Really don't want to get called. Do I slow play the king turn? Wow, we're called by this hand, but we do really well. Not that. There we go. Okay, we we were maybe we were maybe due. We were maybe due one of those potentially, potentially, but maybe not. That's what it is. I'm gonna call king queen down here. All right, I need a king or a queen. King queen or six. Oh, six. That's. All right, well, he's back in it. Uh, we'll defend the king nine. Check raise the flop. This is small. This is big. I will still check raise. River 10, I'm going to go for a check shove. Yeah, this is a raise 50%. I mean, I usually raise 45%, but it's like, it's for whatever. Gonna bet the turn. I'm not thrilled about it, but it's still gonna be a bet. Yeah, I'm still for I'm still not thrilled about this turn, but I just beat enough hands like eight, seven, five, six, five, seven, eight, seven, if I didn't say that already. The queen's not great. Queen's not great. But I have three, four, four, six, hands like that. I feel like I can bet again with king nine. It's gonna have 9-6, 9-7, 9-10, Jack-9. Really don't want to get jumped down, of course. But I think I have my hands worth a block. If I was in position, I would check back because I can just realize my, all my equity. But like this, I feel like a block is good. This guy shoves with fold with no diamond. He shouldn't really do too much shoving like as a bluff. Like 4-6 maybe, 3-4. There's not too much. He may fold 3-4, three, 3-flop, three, so... The tank is interesting. He may think that I always like just use 
two pair in the bigger size. Not necessarily true, actually. But let's see. It depends which one, of course. Like 5-2, sure. Like 9-5, nine, 9-2, five, nine, maybe not. Nice. That's a really, really good one to win. <laughs> a really good one to win. He calls ace-5. Yeah, that, that's a really, really important one to win in terms of the match. Probably thinks I'm playing extremely tight, but I think I just have bad hands, to be honest. A raise call, the ace-10 should be an extremely good... Uh, position versus a shove, like ace fives, ace sevens, ten jacks, ten nines, whatever. Start with big bet. I think I want to be checking some queen x, checking tens and jacks, checking some king fives. So betting this size in makes like jack four, jack nine into somewhat of a difficult spot, makes queen five into somewhat of a difficult spot. Um, yeah. Have a good hand to, to go big. I'm blocking the king and the queen, of course. I've blocked the 10 as well, which means when I go small, like there's less hands to call me. Like 10 extra spades will always call small. So when I block that as well, it makes sense to go bigger, I think. Call a 10. You guys know what we're going to be up to here, don't you? Sweat this one. So one, two, we need a, a two, a four, a spade. A two would be really good. That's a spade. That's a spade. Check. That is a spade. Ooh. Lip call all in. Seven, eight suited. Lip call all in for 15. Eight, nine suited, yes. Yeah. Seven, eight suited, I'm not sure. Um, I'm going to go bet and then free bet all in. Hopefully check raises like Jack of Diamonds 4 or like Jack of Diamonds 7 or something along those lines. And if I, if he folds out, say Queen 8, it's fantastic too, of course. Queen 9 suited limp call all in is going to be the play. Protect my extremely wide limp in range. He has ace 10. We have good equity. Queen 2. We have a king. Nice one. Nice one. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. So yeah, thanks a lot, and that's great. Cheers. I mean, I should I should, I should celebrate a bit more than that, no? Tournament. Should, but where's the energy? Where's the energy now? I mean, I have other tables. I'm just going to continue playing those. But yeah, thanks a lot for watching. I'll do a little outro later on. So yeah, thanks a lot. All right, guys. Video is over now. Hope you enjoyed it. Final table. I actually really enjoyed playing it. There was no stress. I really... I ran well. I won some flips. I lost some flips, but I won the ones which were most crucial... Had some nice runner cards. I think I played pretty good. Uh, yeah, let me know what you think about these kind of very in-depth strategical videos live. I'm not sure if you guys prefer these or if you prefer kind of hand breakdown. So let me know in the comments which you do prefer. And what, what's, what's this hood? Like, I'm really taking this whole Robin Hood thing seriously. Like, I'm not sure what's going on. But yeah, please let me know in the comment section if you prefer this footage to kind of the hand breakdowns or if you want to see podcasts or who you want to see podcasts with. So I want to make so many different kinds of content, but I want to make the ones that you want to watch. That's the whole point, right? So thanks again. I've been Pads on Poker. Like, comment, subscribe, bell, all this kind of stuff going on. Appreciate it.